Uh, welcome everyone to Planet of NY Sports. Here we talk Yankees, Mets, Giants, Jets, and a little bit of the Knicks and Nets. So today we got a Giants and Jets video for you guys today. Now guess what? I know the Giants aren't doing well. You're probably saying, why are you even bothering talking about this team? Well, guess what? This is a public service announcement to all Giant fans out there. Public service announcement. I want you all, you see this right here. You see this picture right here. See this. this. This is a tank. This is a tank. We got Joe Shane on it, and we got Brian Dable on it. You know what I want you um, all you Giant fans to do? I want all of you that haven't already to hop on that tank command right now. Right now. Any Giant fan out there, any Giant fan out there that is still saying, that they should be trying to win games. No. I don't care what Xavier McKinney has to say. I don't care what Darius Slayton has to say. I don't care what those guys have to say. Because quite frankly, they're most likely not going to be on the team next year. I don't care. When you got quarterbacks like Caleb Williams, Drake May, and hey, if you don't want to pick a quarterback, Go ahead and draft Marvin Harrison Jr. to be your number one receiver. There is options in this draft. The Giants need, they need to get a top three pick in this draft. They need to, and they cannot squander that. And I think they are realizing that by playing Tommy DeVito the rest of the year. Remember in the previous video that I did, when we were um, talking about the Giants and the Jets and how the Giants collapsed versus the Jets, I said, play Tommy DeVito the rest of the year. Play this guy the rest of the year so we can lose. And it's looking like Brian Dable heard me right after he said that. Roderick laughed at me. Roderick started laughing. But I, it's true. They've been doing it. They have been doing it. And I know Tyrod Taylor is saying, you know, he's, he's not done for the year. He feels like he can still come back. And yet, look, I get it. The guy is trying to play for a job next year you know, uh, uh, bonuses, blah, blah, blah. But if you're the Giants, Roderick, I'll pose this question to you. If you're the Giants, can you start? Can you afford to start Tyrod Taylor and jeopardize a top two pick this year? I mean, that's the problem when it comes to tanking because, like, in theory, right, if you're the GM, you obviously would like to lose games to get a higher draft pick, but – if you're a player, I mean, the players are obviously trying to win, and you got a guy like Tyrod who, like you said, playing for a job next year, you know, trying to make some more money, right? So it's kind of hard to tell that guy, you know, tell that guy, no, you can't play, but that's what they're going to have to do. I don't think that for them risking a quality starting quarterback is worth a position or two in, in terms of draft position. So, yeah. Yeah, and also, Roderick, I, I would just like to ask you, just to give a different voice here, who's the quarterback that you like the most coming out of this uh, draft class? I'm a, I'm a Drake May guy. Um, Caleb Williams, he just some, – some, I don't know. I don't, watch, I don't watch college. I'm probably wrong. But as we've seen, the best quarterback in these last couple of drafts has not always been the guy that that's came off the board first, so. I'll just leave it there. Yeah, I agree. And there's one thing that concerns me with Caleb Williams. And don't worry, folks. Last year, we didn't have to do, you know, draft, in-depth draft video. This year, we're going to have to be doing it because the Giants are going to be – they're going to have a top three pick. They're going to have a top three pick this year. But with Caleb Williams, there's something that concerns me. And it's not about on the field. It's a – it's off the field. And no, it's not the fact. It's not like causing trouble. It's not that type of stuff. It's He's very emotional. He's very emotional. And my dad brought this up to me. I think everybody can bring this up. But my dad was like, huh, how is he going to feel when he sees a 17-year-old kid and 16-year-old kid in Roderick's, um, a, um, you know, in his situation, criticizing him, a whole entire New York media criticizing him if he doesn't play well. How is he going to handle that? Because we saw Caleb Williams, and I don't know why he did this. I don't know 
why, you know, if he had his PR team with him or anyone there, I don't, they should have advised him not to do this. Going to, going to the stands at the end of the game and crying to his mom. Look, look, I'm not one to judge. I'm not one to judge. I am. <laughs> but you can't do that in New York. You cannot, you absolutely cannot do that in New York. That was that car vibes. Exactly. And that raised an alarm in my head. That was like, oh, there was already some other things with him, you know, being very emotional on the sidelines. We've seen that. But that, that just, that just went, wee, wee. like, I was like, whoa, whoa. Because if he's going to be doing that, how is he going to feel with the New York pressure here? Those guys on WFAN, those guys on ESPN New York Radio, the New York sports media outlets, SNY, yes, coming after him. I, I, I do not like that. That concerns me a lot. Go ahead, go ahead. He should take the Evan Neal route and just call him a bunch of hamburger flippers. That is most likely what is going to happen. If he does come here, I, I, I'm very concerned. But obviously, he has the on-field talent. So, I mean, could this change? Yes. But in my opinion, just going off of right now, I'm kind of liking Drake uh, Drake May more too. I'm liking it more. He's he's uh, 6'4". He's bigger than Caleb Williams, which I like my quarterbacks to be a little taller. And that's uh, – Roderick, stop it. <laughs> that's <laughs> – that's just how I feel personally. We've seen with these shorter quarter, like Caleb Williams is like, he's not small. He's six one. Okay. He has a great arm, but I mean, Drake may, there's just something about him that reminds me. He has like the Josh Allen type of, you know, body and he can, can take some hits and I don't want, look, I don't want another injury prone um, quarterback. That's 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 what I'm also going to say here. I don't want another injury prone quarterback. And I'm not again, I'm not saying Caleb Williams is undersized, but Roderick, how would you feel, you know, in terms of like the size Drake May is 64, Caleb is 61. How how do you think that can come into play? I mean, that's a good question. I'm not I'm not really like a I don't know what it means in terms of like football, but I think that obviously having a, a bigger quarterback, I mean, he probably could. He's probably stronger. He's probably um, able to break some more tackles if he does escape the pocket. And um, it's not the be-all, end-all, but it is nice to have a, a bigger quarterback. So, yeah. And also, just a question here. I, I, I obviously wouldn't do this. I'm not very high on these type of guys, at least for the Giants stay because they're going to probably have a top three pick but how are you feeling about a potential Penix or bo nix i mean to me those guys are college quarterbacks um Penix, my big biggest fan with him because he's actually somebody who i've watched a couple of his tape on his ball pause just doesn't it just, just doesn't do it for me pause um it just doesn't look like it'll translate to the nfl game and bo nix He's been at Oregon for approximately 90 years, so I think I, I just I just don't think it'll, it'll translate much. And plus, he's probably going to go to a team like Tampa Bay or or maybe even a Green Bay, and it's, just, it's not going to translate. They, they, they're just not going to be able to develop him properly. Or the Patriots, team. or the Patriots, the, whoever they draft, they're going to run. So um, there's that. So, so yeah, that's my take on that. Yeah, but you heard it here, Giant fans. No more. When I say, I mean, no more wins. No more. Nada. Look, you got Washington. You're playing in Washington. I expect that to be an L. You got Tommy DeVito. He's terrible. There's another, there's a game that concerns me, which is the Patriot game. This game kind of concerns me because I can see Belichick going and saying, hey, I'm going to lose this game on purpose because then it's going to screw you guys over and we're going to go ahead of you in the draft. I can see Belichick doing something like that, but I think the Patriots have a very, very good defense still. That's going to confuse Tommy DeVito, luckily, and it'll be an ugly, let's say, 6-10 to 10 type of game, Patriots win. 
But then, then I think they have the Green Bay Packers. Oh, boy. Even that kind of concerns me. I know. The Packers, eh, eh. This game concerns me. They are playing in MetLife too. If they were in play, if they were playing in Lambeau, I'd be like, they're playing in MetLife. Who knows? I mean, Jordan Love. You don't know what you're going to get from Jordan Love. You you really do not know what you're going to get from that guy. That but then, terrible. <laughs> but then, the last four games of the year, I am not concerned. You got the Saints in New Orleans. L. Eagles on Christmas. My Christmas is going to be ru- – oh, well, no. Originally, I said my Christmas was going to be ruined if the Giants lost this game. But now my Christmas will actually be quite nice if the Giants lose and do me a solid and get higher in that draft. L there. Then they have the Rams. That's The Rams, they have a bunch of wide receivers who I don't think the Giants are going to handle quite well. And I'm going to say they lose that game, and then they face the Eagles last game of the year, which – Hot take here, but that game concerned me because, quite frankly, I can see the Eagles, if they already have the first seed locked up, imagine this. Hey, they're like, you know what? Let's screw the Giants over again just like we did a few years ago. And then they decide to rest their guys, and then the Giants somehow end up winning that game. If that happens, I'm going to lose my – I'm not going to say the word, but I'm going to lose it. I'll come on here, and I, you're going to see you know, an all-time rank if the Giants – lose the first or second pick i'm going to lose i'm going to lose it but moving on to the jets okay where do i even start here with the new york jets look they lost against the raiders in a game which they needed the the raiders who fired their head coach um a few weeks ago and they have been playing better football as of late but if you're the jets I, I don't really know the state of this football team. The defense, obviously, is not the problem here. It's the offense. It's the offense. Uh, Roderick, do you want to just talk about the Jets and their offensive struggles? The Jets have not been able to put put together games where the defense has stood up, been sturdy, held the other team at other, under 20 points, and the offense has just it's been struggling. And that most of that falls on Zach Wilson. Part of it falls on Nathaniel Hackett, but – like, like most people are talking about, it rests on the shoulders of number two, and they just can't get it done. A couple of drives in that Raiders game where, okay, they're moving the ball, but they do a pick to Roberts Belaine, right? So they haven't been able to, to finish drives. They obviously had four field goals in that last game. So, you know, something has to change. I don't know what they'll do, but something has to change. Yeah, and Sala alluded to that. He said that we need to make some changes, and apparently they did cut Michael Carter. That's not going to really move the needle much there. I mean, like, woo, they cut Michael Carter, big deal. But look, the Jets, something needs to change. Obviously, you got to, like, in my opinion, I think, and I get it, Zach Wilson is not the greatest quarterback ever by any means, but – But I will argue, even if Zach throws maybe two to three interceptions in a game, I think they should start letting him sling it. They need to start letting him throw the ball more. That's what I'm going to bring up. Zach Wilson, and yes, I know, Jeff Fancher, probably like, what? But he needs to be unleashed. The Jets, look. They're playing games. They're playing them to keep them close, which is what we've seen. We've seen how they've used Brees Hall but it's not being opened up enough um, for Brees Hall. Like, especially they don't let him um, play on third downs either, which I've noticed, which is quite strange. But they need to have Zach. They, they need to have Zach, you know, throw it down the field and possibly open it up more for Brees Hall because Brees Hall has had a pretty lackluster um, last two games. I'm going to bring that up. And obviously, like I said before in a previous video, Davin Cook is just not the guy there anymore. Brees Hall is the number one running back there. And that's not going to change. But let Zach just throw the ball. Let him throw it more. And at least put some scare into a defense. And they're like, okay, maybe we'll have to, you know, and then you can open it up more for Brees Hall for one of those big runs that he has. Roderick, what's your take on that? I like that. It's not a bad idea. And it's better than probably what they're doing right now. So 
Why not? Yeah, because like I said, the Jets have been playing to keep games close. But obviously, they have zero control of the games that, um, you know, they've been trying to keep close. So you're not going to achieve jack. You're not going to achieve anything. You're not. It's that simple. Now, one more topic here real quick. R Roderick, do you think, and take all your bias out of it, do you think that Rodgers should still come back at all? Let's say if the Jets are... Hmm. Let's say the Jets have seven wins somehow, which is impossible. And like they can possibly, if 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 there's if there's a possibility that they can go ten and seven, which originally you and I both said a team may have to go like eleven and six in the AFC to make the playoffs. Because, but now looking at the Browns, the Browns can possibly fall out of it, given Deshaun Watson's injury. Could Aaron Rodgers or should Aaron Rodgers still come back this year? No, this is an this is an Edwin Diaz situation, um, in pretty much every sense of the word or in every sense of the situation. Um, the team is underperforming. The team is going to get him back late in the season, possibly. Um, of course, Rodgers wants to return, but I think they should already be looking towards next year. And if they do beat Buffalo this week, then maybe we could have, reopen this conversation, but they're probably going to lose to Buffalo. And when they do, they should, you know, shut them down for the rest of the year and um, just f focus on next year. Yep, because Rodgers will still be here next year. And there, dare I say, the Jets should possibly look into getting Devontae Adams here. That it's not really a hot take, but I think the Jets should certainly look into it. I think they should. Roger, just how do you feel about that for the Jets? I know as a Viking fan, you know, but they're not in your division anymore. So how would like do you think the Jets should pursue that? Especially given when you look at the Jets' wide receivers besides Garrett Wilson, huh, some of the guys that they've signed have been pretty disappointing. Alan Lazard, goodness gracious. What a waste. What a waste of money. Waste of money. Cobb, Cobb was basically brought in because of Rodgers. I mean, they got all these receivers here that haven't done anything. How would you feel about a Devontae Adams for the Jets? I do think the skill positions are definitely lacking, especially in terms of pass catching. Because, like, who are those Titan is Tyler Con Conklin. Like, I'm like, that's not really it's not really bringing uh -oh, people folks. out of the field. field. Wait, do you hear me? Yeah, you just got disconnected. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really cool. <laughs> anyway, guys, I have my, 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 anyway, their weapons are pretty lag. They don't have great pass catching options. Their tight ends are like Tyler Conklin and CJ Uzama. They suck. Um, besides G5, they don't have anything else. And part of that is on the quarterback, but part of that is that the second receiver, I can't name who that is. So whether it's in the draft, get a guy like um, the guy from Florida State, and his, um, his name is escaping me right now, or maybe even trading up, trying to look at, get a look at Marvin Harrison. But the, the capital they would have to give to get Devontae Adams, I think, is a little too much. And the Reds already expressed they really don't want to give, give him up. But let's play fantasy world right quick. If, if they can make it work, I, I think they should do it. But again, that's another risky trade to, to do because you're probably going to have to leverage something that you probably don't want to give up. Yep, there's definitely an argument to be made there. Now, if you can all do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think the Giants should draft Caleb Williams or Drake May or even Marvin Harrison Jr.? Or do you have an, a hot take and, and are you a Penix guy or a Bo Nix guy? I hope you you're not. Josh Dobbs. Who, the Giants? Mm hmm Well, oh, I'm, joking. I'm joking. Okay. All right. You heard it all from Roderick. Roderick, any uh, final thoughts? Um, The Broncos suck. All right. Let's hope Josh Dobbs comes through and uh, beats the Broncos this week. See you all in the next video.